that the Balaturi at the beginning of Vayakal, because a couple of uh, our study partners have raised the, cre- the connection between the creation story and the Mishkan. So let's look at what Balaturim says on the first verse of Parshas Vayakel. It says, again, we'll look at the verse, Vayakel Moshe, Moshe gathered, Skoadas b'nei Israel, all the children of Israel, Vayomer aliyem, and he said to them, Eilad varim. These are the matters, Asher Tziva Hashem Masototam. These are the matters which God commanded to do them. So let's just look at the uh, term on this verse, verse, and all of his comments are powerful, but the last one is this bombshell. The last one is the bombshell. So he says, Vayakel, he says, so first thing in the word Vayakel, Balaturim notes. Now, by the way, the legend is that the Balaturim wrote this whole commentary in one night. And then he wrote it in one night. And so it says, Vayakel Moshe, what does it mean? Prior to this, it says, at the end of Parshas Kisisa, it says that Moshe's face had become radiant. Usamachle Parshat Shabbat. And now right after Vayakel, this next verse talks about the mitzvah of Shabbat. And that's to tell you, panim shal Shabbat yamim. That's to tell us first and foremost that our face glows on Shabbat. The appearance of her face is different on Shabbat than on other days. What a powerful, beautiful thing to say. That the appearance, because the previous passage was about Moshe's face shining, and now the next verse is about Shabbat. So the Baal Turim says it's to tell us that, that our face shines on, on Shabbat. That's the first thing. Second thing he says, Vayakel. Why did it say Vayakel immediately to before the commandment of Shabbat? To tell us Shabbatot v'yom tovim nikalim l'shmo adrasha. That it's important to go on Shabbat and Yom Tov to hear words of Torah being said. Okay, you have to go and hear the sermon here at Var Torah. It's all important to do on Shabbat. Number three, third comment. Elad varim, these are the matters. The Balaturim says over here, this is a pretty uh, well-known statement. This Balaturim, because it comes from the Mesechat Shabbat, Darshumikan, the word Ewa has a numerical value of 39. Aleph Lamed Hey, 30 Ewa. Advarim, Ewa is, well, Ewa Advarim, Shoshim Vitesha Mwachot Shabbat. We learn from here the 39, because it's Ewa, the word Ewa is Lamed, He, and Av is 36. And then Devarim is an additional two. And hey makes one more, and that's how you get to 39. It's a little strange counting. So in this case is different. So anyway, he says that's how we derive the 39 prohibition. But now we get to the comment that I said is a bombshell. La asot to do. So he said. Otiot Lamed Tesha. That the the letters of this word can be rearranged to spell 39. Lamed Tesha. If you like you spell it backwards. 39. The Vav. It's missing a, the, the letter Vav to tell us that the 39 prohibited labors, you should do them on the six days and not on Shabbat. And now he says, okay, so let me just summarize what he just said here. It says the word, that God commanded you to do them. The word is missing the letter Vav. It's to tell us 
that the that the 39 prohibited activities, you're supposed to do them during the week. You're supposed to work during the week. You're not supposed to sit around not working. Fine. Where else does it say this word, la'asot? That God created the world. Right, the very first verse. First verse in the whole Bible. Breshit bara elokim la'asot. God created the world. And at the end of the creation story, excuse me, what does it say? It says, Vayahu. It says in there, Vayahu Hashemayim Arts. And 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 Timsa, you will find in that creation story from Bereshit, from the beginning of day one until God finishes the creation story. You will find a total of asiyot ubriyot, muachot vavayot, hotzaot vavdarot, kuram ramitet. You will find a total of thirty-nine words that are forms of asiya, which means to make, bria means to create, muachah means to labor. Havaya means to being, hotza'a bring forth, and havdala separation. There are 39 words that are spoken by God as an act of creation or the direct fulfillment of God's words. 39 words. And the commentary here counts it up and proves that the Baal Turim is correct. So it means to say that. Hold on, let me just finish one more sentence he makes. And so too, from the word Vayakel, until Lo Tevaro Eish Biyom HaShabbat, you'll find 39 words, aside from the word of Shabbat. You'll find 39 words. So what are we seeing from this? The Balaturim is making an explicit comparison between the work necessary to build the Mishkan and the creation of the world by God. God used 39 verbs to create the world. The Mishkan has 39 prohibitions of Shabbat that are connected to the Mishkan. So when when God created the world, God was, so to speak, making a Mishkan. We have the ability to also be partners with God in creating this world by making a mishkan. We are creating a enhanced world, a more beautiful, beautiful world. That is what the mishkan is. That's the parallel between the mishkan and the creation of the world. So when we build the mishkan, and now we can no longer build the mishkan in Jerusalem, but when we make a sanctuary, what we are doing is being God's partner in creating the world. That's what the Balaturim is saying. That's the powerful message of the Balaturim about the parallel between God's 39 words in creating the world and the 39 words necessary to create the Mishkan. Anyway, I'll stop here, see if anybody has questions about this idea.